Hey fam, I've been doing other things and sometimes I like to take a little bit of a break from YouTube because, you know, people aren't very kind and I just need to not get so overwhelmed, you know, with what is going on. But I do feel the weight of our people on my shoulders a lot, so it's good to take that rest, you know. But I can't run away from my calling ever. So here I am. Today I'm going to just tell you about why I do not keep Purim or Purim, however you want to say it. There's multiple reasons for this. If you don't know the story of Purim or Purim, go look at the book of Esther. It's one of the last canonized by the Great Assembly, uh, the 24 Hebrew books. And it is a story about Esther, Mordecai, King Hashuerus, and this guy named Haman. Some people say Haman. So real quick, King Hashuerus is a name that appears in the Old Testament as well as the Apocrypha, but it appears as Xerxes or Artaxerxes, which is just the Greek name of that Persian king's name. And he uh, ruled over uh, the Achaemenid, I think that's how you say it, the Achaemenid Empire, which is just old Persia. So he is a real person. He is a real character. However, the other people that I mentioned before, there's not really historical evidence that they even existed, resulting in a lot of scholars that say that the book of Esther is actually a historical fiction rather than true Hebrew scriptures. Now, a lot of the things that were even put in Esther don't even, like the writing style, for instance, doesn't even align with how the Hebrew Israelites wrote in that time so if follow if you read it for real for real like all the chapters chapter one to chapter 10 you see that it looks like a fable more than an account of the most high and my, when I was reading it, I was just like my my spirit is just not connecting with this I don't know why and I just looked at it and I was like wait a second this story has nothing to do with the Most High at all. And frankly, he's not even mentioned in it, but I'm going to cover that in a second. Esther and Mordecai are Jews, and King Hashuerus, he has this party, it gets lit, he gets super, super hammered, and then he orders his queen at the time, Queen Vashti, to come out and to show herself off or whatever. She's like, uh swerve i'm not doing that and then he's like he gets mad esther she becomes queen and he loves her he's literally obsessed with her to the fullest and she won favor in his sight again the father's not mentioned in this story at all um this guy named haman or haman he's an agagite whatever that means and he gets mad because Mordecai is like, I'm not bowing down to you. Then Haman is trying to hang Mordecai. Then Haman sends a decree for all of these people who are Jews to be killed brutally. Long story short, Haman gets hanged on the gallow that he set up to hang Mordecai on. And yeah. And then the, 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 it says the Jewish people. It literally says Jewish people. So we're able to go and kill all of the people who hated them. It's like 75,000 Persians died and all this stuff. The thing is, guys, it's very clear in the, the history of our forefathers. If you are Hebrew Israelite or you think you're Hebrew Israelite or if you read about the Hebrew Israelites, we know that they do not do anything without the Most High. They do not fight a battle without the Most High because if they do, they lose. So this story, something else that stuck out to me was that they went and they killed all these people without the Most High's command, without the Most High's prophet saying so, without the Most High's messengers or judges or anybody. They're, they just go and kill the people who hated them without the Most High's permission, right? And then they, they're they successful. And that's why I was like, wait a second. Because it was like, yeah, then they killed everybody who hated the Jews. And it reminded me of, of when I listened, because I grew up in a Jewish community. 
I listen to a lot of the Holocaust testimonies and and stuff growing up and I remember how they will always say stuff about like well if you hate the Jewish people then you're gonna be in trouble and all of that and and like basically people who hate Jewish people will get their butts handed to them and that's what it seemed like the book of Esther was it had nothing to do with the most high it had to do with the Jewish people it had to do with people getting drunk and do you see where I'm going this has nothing to do with Hebrew Israelite like culture this is literally a book about Jewish fables it's a it's literally about a Jewish fable please know that there is a difference between Jews and Jewish Israelites and Israelis Shemitics and Semites why is this important to know well if you didn't know the term Jew is someone who belongs to the a tribe who is in, a part of the southern kingdom of Yahuda or Judah that's where the term Jew comes from. Jewish is someone who's not even in that, that connected to that bloodline, and they're kind of Jew, but they're not. Those are the people who are in the Holocaust, not the ones who are put on slave ships and oppressed and living out all the curses, because obviously the Jewish people are prosperous right now, right? Then Israelites, that's a nationality based on people rather than a place. So if you're the nation of Israel, it doesn't matter where you are, you're still that nationality because in the Bible it talks about nations being people and not places. Unlike today, when you hear about an Israeli, Israelis are people who belong to a certain place like Israel, who what we think is Israel right now, the land of Israel, uh, they belong to that nation as a place, not the nation of people. That's why they're Israelis and not Israelites. And finally, Shemites are people who are bloodline descendants from Shem, which is the bloodline connect lineage to Abraham, Isaac, Yaakov, whose names got name got changed to Israel or Yasharel. And the other people are they called Semites. When you say anti-Semitic, that's all has to do with the Israelis, the Jewish people, people who are not from the line of Shem, but rather from Gomer, who had the son Ashkenaz who that's why we know about the Ashkenazi Jews at this point in time in history it is so important to be knowledgeable about who people are because the father is using actors and he's moving them around like a game of chess the children of Israel are the main actors that the most high uses obviously in the new testament they're not the main character anymore they're not the main actors anymore and now it's about other people and it's not so much about the most high but it's about someone else they think is his son right some of the other red flags that i noticed about the book of esther is that not only does it not mention the most high at all it says holiday Instead of a holy day, they're, they're saying that Purim is a holiday. Holidays are not holy days, right? Christmas is a holiday. It is not a holy day. You know what I'm saying? Esther, Easter, Eshtar, Easter. That is not a holy day. That is a holiday. So what, so what do you believe? Well, here's the thing. Not only is the word holiday only mentioned in the book of Esther, out of all of the Tanakh, out of everywhere, right? It's not a feast day. It's not one of the four spring feasts either. We have Pesach, we have unleavened bread, we have first fruits, and we have feast of weeks. The father never ever prophesies or says in the Torah that we would have to celebrate Purim. It's not mentioned in the Torah, it's only mentioned in Esther. What the... This is a Jewish holiday based on a Jewish fable of historical fiction. It is not the word of the Most High, and he doesn't speak in it, just like the Most High doesn't speak in the New Testament. Thus says Yahuwah, never, or thus says the Lord, never appears in the New Testament once. So because Esther doesn't do this, because the New Testament doesn't do this, if these things aren't commanded, the Father never commanded us to take communion, to be baptized, to speak in tongues, to all, do all these extra things, these man-made things, I'm not about to go and stress myself out and keep these things when the Father has not said it in his law, it didn't say it in the law, even through his prophets, he never said that we would have to do those things in the New Testament or we'd have to celebrate Purim 
And you see this? This is what our people are stuck in between. Our people are stuck in between following Jewish holidays and doing Christian observances that have nothing to do with Hebrew Israelite culture or Hebrew Israelite heritage or Hebrew Israelite law because the Most High's hand is not on it. So why would I follow it? Capital L-O-R-D is not mentioned in the book of Esther. The word God is not mentioned in the book Esther. So that means Yahuwah Elohim is not mentioned in the book of Esther. And it is from the Jewish people. I will leave historical references down below for you to do your own research. Um, because this stuff didn't really happen. It's a fable with with an actual real historical figure, Artaxerxes or Hashuerus, he was a legit dude, but this stuff never happened. And a lot of people, scholars do say that um, Esther and Mordecai are named after two Babylonian gods uh, who I will not speak upon my lips because of Exodus 23, 13, even though I accidentally said it earlier, one of them when I was explaining a Christian holiday. forgive me most high thank you father um but yeah like y'all we got to do our own research guys or we're just going to be stuck on following other things commandments and books of men that aren't ours and by the way esther and mordecai obliged the jew the jews to keep this holiday the most high never said so That's kind of like people declaring that 420 is a holiday. Okay, the Most High never declared it as one. Do you know what I'm saying? That's probably not a great example, but you get it. It's like whatever people write down, a man or somebody can write down something in a book, and then people believe it, right? Paul can say something, and then you're like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I have to do this. No, Paul never says, thus says the Lord. Paul never says, thus says Yahuwah. Do you know what I'm saying? I follow what what his Hebrew prophets have spoken because they say, thus says Yahuwah. And, and our forefathers have followed those things and they were successful until they ended up looking at all these other nations and doing all these other things um, that end up getting them fricked up and that's why we're so cursed because we don't even know our own elohim and what he says so all right much love i'll talk to you later probably do a video about this coronavirus thing because everybody freaking out but yeah shalom peace unto you ooh, 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 ooh.